mic, Red Fox, Flux Node, home server. Now, why would you want to run a node on Flux? Well, for starters, if you have Flux, you can take it and put it to work to get more Flux. And I guess really that's the only reason monetarily. There's other great reasons to support the network and all. But as we scroll down here, there's in this video, we're going to cover the three nodes uh, that you can run. There's some other ones, but these are like the three foundational nodes that you can run. Cumulus, Nimbus, and Stratus nodes. And so you can take the flux and we use Cumulus as the example here. That's what I'm going to be doing in this video. You can take your thousand flux and put it into a node and it's not locked up. You can end the node and get that flux back at any time. So it's just there as long as you're running the node, but it's a requirement for the node to stand up on the network. Beyond that, there are some hardware requirements in order to run a node on the network. And you can see those listed here. And these ones are pretty basic. I can meet them with the old Dell Enterprise server I have here in my house, uh, which is what we'll be doing in this video. We'll be running a node, the second of many, uh, hopefully on the Enterprise server. I can do eight on my home IP address. So I'm gonna be doing that. Now, the thing that I run into is the uh, internet upload speeds. I can get 40 megabit per second upload speed here, and that's the max I can get with my provider, which allows me to meet the Cumulus node requirements. But you can see for Nimbus and Stratus, I can't meet those coming in at 50 and 100 megabit per second download and upload speed. So I do have one of each of those other nodes, and they're running on a virtual private server, a VPS, where I can rent that hardware, rent all these specs, and I pay for that to rent it and then I can run my node uh, over there. They don't get my flux or anything. It's still mine. It still sits in my Zellcore in my wallet, but it allows me to rent the hardware if I can't do it here at home or if it just doesn't make sense monetarily for me to do it here at home. And so let's talk a little bit about profitability. There's this really cool calculator I found. I'll leave links to all the stuff down in the description below, but uh, let's just take the Cumulus node. We're just gonna run one of those. My hosting cost is nothing because I'm gonna be using hardware I already have. Uh, and you can say, see, with my one Cumulus node, I will be getting about seven additional flux per month. So my thousand flux will make additional seven flux per month, every month. Plus, uh, I will be getting 6.34 flux tokens or parallel assets. So you can convert those to, to native flux at any time. So really just thinking that I'm going to be making uh, 13 flux per month as it stands right now which is uh, giving me additional $4, we'll just call it $4.50 per month. So that's great because I have this hardware and it's available and that's just gonna make me uh, more money instead of just sitting there. In fact, I can run eight of these here at my house on a single IP address. So let's just see as I do that, um, you can see I'll be getting about $35, $36 in profit per month with the price of Flux right now making this video at 33 cents so let's just have some fun with that while we're here and i think flux hit a little over three dollars uh at its all-time high so let's just see what happens if i put that in so you can say then i hypothetically would have been making 320 dollars uh, per month on there so that's pretty rad and then i also have a nimbus node running on a vps and i have a stratus node running on a vps as well so in case you're curious, that's what I'll be doing. Uh, and then all of those will generate more flux and then I can put that into more nodes. And as I mine, I get more flux, put that into more nodes and just keep this whole thing going. And then let's just see if it got back up to three bucks. That's a pretty good uh, monthly take home um, for doing this. So I'm putting the legwork right now. That's some uh, prices that I hope it goes back up to and beyond. But again, just thinking about where it's at right now still taking home $155 in profit uh, per month uh, running some nodes. So really stoked on that. And so, yeah, what I have is I have a old uh, Dell Enterprise server that's uh, in my basement and I run a couple other things on that and uh, it meets all the specs and I'll show you how to test all of that, uh, test your CPU, test your hard drive. You can do this on a PC, you can do this on a server, you can do this on a VPS, um, but if you got some old hardware sitting around or you got some PCs you're not using, maybe this is a good 
use of your time to get one of these up and running. So I'm gonna be running this node and setting it up over on Proxmox here. Now, if you're not familiar with Proxmox, setting all that up, getting that installed is outside the scope of this video. Uh, but what I'm gonna be focused on here today is creating a virtual machine to run a node within the Proxmox environment. So what you're looking at here is is the uh, server that I have in the basement, all its specs. And what I can do in Proxmox is dedicate resources to virtual machines that are running on the server. And so I'm gonna do that in just a second when we get started running this node. But one of the first things you gotta do is download the right version of Linux to run this on. So you can see that version here is Ubuntu 20.04.6. So what you wanna download, upload it over onto your server or where you're gonna be running this. And so now I can start creating the virtual machine. So I'm gonna go up here, create VM. And I'm just gonna call this one node two since I have one running already. And I'm gonna give this a VM ID of 105. And we're gonna hit next. And then I'm gonna select where I have that Linux uh, version downloaded, which is the local hard drive here. Go ahead and select that. And we're gonna hit next and leave all this default next. And now this is where we get into splitting, uh, sharing the, the resources of the server over to this virtual machine. And this is where we have to meet the requirements listed here for the Cumulus node. So right now I need to do uh, the 220 gigabytes uh, required on an SSD or NVMe. And I have a two terabyte SSD running in there. So I'm gonna give it a little bit more. I'm gonna give it 240, which I believe is two terabytes split uh, evenly, and that's just gonna give a little headroom just in case it needs it. And that's gonna be my node SSD. And then we're gonna continue on from there. And I'm over at the CPU and requirements there are two cores, four threads. So I need to dedicate over two sockets and two cores. Two cores uh, will give you um, the right amount of threads uh, that you need. And so we're gonna hit next here. And then uh, memory, so it needs to be eight gigabytes of RAM, uh, which is gonna be 8,192 megabytes. And then my network setup is is ready to go. Yours might be a little different depending how you're running this, but uh, this is gonna be based on how you run your network. And then, so I'm gonna finish that. And now I have my node here, it's created. Um, and you can see it's getting set up and I'm gonna jump over in console and we're gonna see once it gets going, what, uh, what we get on the screen here. All right, Linux is all booted up. So we're gonna continue with English and we're gonna continue without updating. And then we got English as the layout. And then I already have my network all set up and ready to go. Uh, we don't need proxy, so we're gonna keep going from that. Done. Um, okay, so we got our hard disk here. I'm gonna leave that all default. And then I think the next screen, we gotta change something here. Yeah, so it like dedicates and splits the volume. So we gotta go take care of that. So uh, I need to go to this 100 gigabyte, unmount it and edit this to be, uh, you can just put in like the max size and it'll just figure it out. And then I'm gonna mount that the root and then we have uh, the right partition that I need which is now 237 gigabytes so we can hit done we want to continue uh, we're going to enter some information here my name is red fox um, we're going to call this cumulus 2 and then just pick username whatever you want and your password. Done. Next, uh, we do need to install, and I'd recommend installing Open SSH Server because I'm going to use PuTTY to remote uh, into this in just a second. Once we get all going here, I'm not going to need any of this stuff. And right now, it's going to be installing, so we'll let that roll. Installs all complete, so I'm here to login screen. So I'm going to type in that user account that I created in the earlier step, uh, followed by the password. Okay, and so we are in, and now I'm looking at that IP address because what I wanna do is use PuTTY because uh, it'll let me do some copy and pasting that for whatever reason, I can't figure out how to do in the Proxmox console. So you can see that local IP address that I have there is 
1.79. So be able to connect SSH over to here. First thing I want to do, because the guy that I follow, which I'll leave linked down in the description below, told me is to run uh, this command to do, I guess, some updates. And I am not great with Linux. So we're going to run that and let it do some updates here. Password. All that's done. And so now I want to run some benchmarks on the machine. So the first thing I got to do is install uh, System Bench here. And that's going to allow me to test the CPU. All right, with that installed, I can run this command that's going to test the CPU. And I'll walk you through it in just a second. All right, so I know this is pretty tiny to see on your screen here, but what you're looking for is the events per second. This is per thread. So I clocked in at 67 events per second. And now if you go back here to the Cumulus node, you can see that I need 240 events per second. And then so that is with all four cores together. So I am good where I'm at because if you take that 67 and times it by four, it's going to be more than the requirements for the node, which is gonna be 240 events per second. So I am in good shape on that. And the next thing I'm gonna do is test uh, the drive speed to make sure that that hits spec. So I'm gonna paste in this command here. Okay, so came back 371 megabytes per second, which going back here, I needed to hit 180 megabytes per second on the drive speed. So again, I'm looking really good there. Now I've got to do a couple installations here of utilities. So the first one I'm going to do is I'm going to install curl. And that's going to allow data transfer over the network. So that's installed. And then I need to install NPM, which is going to uh, support JavaScript. Next, we're going to run the multi toolbox. This is starting to get into the fun part, I promise, of uh, installing the Flux Node. So we're going to paste that in there and it's going to load up the Flux Node multi toolbox that's going to allow us to now get into getting the Flux Node ready to go. First step on here is to install Docker, which is going to allow us to run this in a container. Got to switch over to the root user, paste in that command again, and back to installing Docker. Docker's installed to switch over back to the Red Fox user. And we're going to run that command again to get us back to the multi toolbox. And now we're going to hit step two, which is going to be installing the flux node. Now it's time to head over to Zellcore to do some work. So the first thing you want to do is actually transfer over the 1000 required collateral to run this node. And so Zellcore is really smart. As soon as you transfer that 1000 to a wallet that you have on Zellcore, it's going to create a flux node for you because it sees that transaction as just 1000 and so you can see it's done it for me here the cumulus 2 it's currently offline and it will be online soon as soon as i finish everything i'm doing in this video so i'm going to go down to edit and the first thing it's asking for is the identity key so we have that we'll paste that in right here hit okay and then we need the flux node collateral transaction id so we'll head back over and we're going to copy that right in Okay, and flux node output index, which is usually a zero or a one. In this case, it is a zero. We'll just copy that, paste that in, hit okay. Now we're gonna go get the Zell ID from Zellcore apps. So let's go back in, out of here. We're gonna go over to apps, Zell ID, and then we're gonna copy this in right here. And then I don't think KDA rewards work anymore. So um, I'm just gonna get it anyway. And I don't think they apply for the Cumulus nodes, but let's just head over. All right, KDA address is in there. Flux and installation, we're just gonna hit option one. That took a while. Enable auto update, yes. Alert notification, yes. Uh, we'll set up the Discord notifications. Enter name of your node, Cumulus. Two. Flux installation is complete and it said to run this PM2 list. Uh, just check uh, that I didn't get any error and everything looks good there. So I'm gonna go back over to the toolbox, paste that in here. Uh, and it's failing benchmarks right now because I have not enabled uh, UPMP, which is option 14 here, which is required 
for the right ports being forwarded through your router so that the flux uh, node can connect to it. So we're gonna go ahead and enable UPnP. It's already enabled on my router. You have to set that up to make sure your router is uh, set up to have UPnP enabled uh, in order to communicate with this. So it's given options uh, for some ports. I've already used the first one for my first node. So I'm gonna do the second one, which is 16137. Hit okay. That is the correct IP address for my router. Checking the port is open and you can see on this port tracker website, it is, so everything worked correctly there. We're gonna head back over uh, to Zellcore here and we're actually gonna now be able to start this node. So now it is in started status and it's gotta get to confirm, which is gonna take uh, some time because it needs to do some confirmations on the network and you can see those uh, happening right here. So it's in started, it'll get to confirmed and then it's gonna start earning some rewards for us. So while well, that node is getting confirmed and benchmarking on the network, we'll take a look at the other node that I have running here and the way you can do this to get to Flux uh, OS here is just put in the local IP address of your node followed by the port that you want up opening and you'll get this dashboard here and you can see here Cumulus node and then all of the specs that I was able to meet for the minimum requirements to run on uh, Cumulus node on the Flux network. And then the other thing you can do is come over here and look on the daemon, get your Flux node status. You can see here it is confirmed on the network and ready to go. And that's exactly what will happen with the other Flux node that I have running shortly once benchmarking and all that is finished. But that's it. I have six more of these to create. Uh, so I can get eight up and running here on my home server at my house. Uh, there is a little bit of a cheat sheet shortcut. Once you've created one, you can clone the virtual machine uh, to create the second one and just tweak it a little bit. And I'll leave instructions for that in the instructions that I followed to do all of this down in the description below. And uh, that's it. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below. Uh, and you can join my Discord, social media, all linked down in the description below. If this video is helpful to you. Please uh, hit the like button, sub for more mining content. And as always, please take care of yourself, take care of each other, and I'll see you in the next video.